Organizational Behavior, Wikipedia Article Audio Organizational behavior or organizational behavior is the study of human behavior in organizational settings, the interface between human behavior and the organization, and the organization itself. OB research can be categorized in at least three ways, including the study of Overview Relation to industrial and organizational psychology History Current state of the field Research methods used Quantitative methods Computer simulation Qualitative methods Topics Consulting Counterproductive work behavior Decision making Employee mistreatment Abusive supervision Bullying Incivility Sexual harassment Teams Job-related attitudes and emotions Leadership Managerial roles Motivation National culture Organizational citizenship behavior Organizational culture Personality Chester Barnard recognized that individuals behave differently when acting in their organizational role than when acting separately from the organization. Organizational behavior researchers study the behavior of individuals primarily in their organizational roles. One of the main goals of organizational behavior is to revitalize organizational theory and develop a better conceptualization of organizational life. Occupational stress Work family Miner mentioned that there is a certain arbitrariness in identifying a point at which organizational behavior became established as a distinct discipline suggesting that it could have emerged in the 1940s or 1950s. He also underlined the fact that the Industrial Psychology Division of the American Psychological Association did not add organizational to its name until 1970, long after organizational behavior had clearly come into existence, noting that a similar situation arose in sociology. Although there are similarities and differences between the two disciplines, there is still confusion around differentiating organizational behavior and organizational psychology. Organization Theory Bureaucracy As a multidisciplinary field, organizational behavior has been influenced by developments in a number of related disciplines including, sociology, industrial-slash-organizational psychology, and economics. The Industrial Revolution is a period from the 1760s where new technologies resulted in the adoption of new manufacturing techniques and increased mechanization. In his famous iron cage metaphor, Max Weber raised concerns over the reduction in religious and vocational work experiences. Weber claimed that the Industrial Revolution's focus on efficiency constrained the worker to a kind of prison and stripped a worker of their individuality. The significant social and cultural changes caused by the Industrial Revolution also gave rise to new forms of organization. Weber analyzed one of these organizations and came to the conclusion that bureaucracy was an organization that rested on rational legal principles and maximized technical efficiency. A number of OB practitioners documented their ideas about management and organization. The best-known theories today originate from Henri Fayol, Chester Barnard, and Mary Parker Follett. All three of them drew from their experience to develop a model of effective organizational management, and each of their theories independently shared a focus on human behavior and motivation. One of the first management consultants, Frederick Taylor, 
was a 19th century engineer who applied an approach known as the scientific management. Taylor advocated for maximizing task efficiency through the scientific method. The scientific method was further refined by Lillian and Frank Gilbreth, who utilized time and motion study to further improve worker efficiency. In the early 20th century the idea of Fordism emerged. Named after automobile mogul Henry Ford, the method relied on the standardization of production through the use of assembly lines. This allowed unskilled workers to produce complex products efficiently. Sorensen later clarified that Fordism developed independently of Taylor. Fordism can be explained as the application of bureaucratic and scientific management principles to whole manufacturing process. The success of the scientific method and Fordism resulted in the widespread adoption of these methods. In the 1920s, the Hawthorne Works Western Electric Factory commissioned the first of what was to become known as the Hawthorne Studies. These studies initially adhered to the traditional scientific method, but also investigated whether workers would be more productive with higher or lower lighting levels. The results showed that regardless of lighting levels, when workers were being studied, productivity increased, but when the studies ended, worker productivity would return to normal. In following experiments, Elton Mayo concluded that job performance and the so-called Hawthorne effect was strongly correlated to social relationships and job content. Following the Hawthorne study's motivation became a focal point in the OB community. A range of theories emerged in the 1950s and 1960s and include theories from notable OB researchers such as Frederick Herzberg, Abraham Maslow, David McClelland, Victor Vroom, and Douglas McGregor. These theories underline employee motivation, work performance, and job satisfaction. Herbert Simon S. Administrative Behavior introduced a number of important OB concepts, most notably decision-making. Simon, along with Chester Barnard, argued that people make decisions differently inside an organization when compared to their decisions outside of an organization. While classical economic theories assume that people are rational decision-makers, Simon argued a contrary point. He argued that cognition is limited because of bounded rationality for example, decision-makers often employ satisficing, the process of utilizing the first marginally acceptable solution rather than the most optimal solution. Simon was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics for his work on organizational decision-making. In the 1960s and 1970s, the field started to become more quantitative and resource-dependent. This gave rise to contingency theory, institutional theory, and organizational ecology. Starting in the 1980s, cultural explanations of organizations and organizational change became areas of study, in concert with fields such as anthropology, psychology, and sociology. Research in and the teaching of OB primarily takes place in university management departments in colleges of business. Sometimes OB topics are taught in industrial and organizational psychology graduate programs. There have been additional developments in OB research and practice. Anthropology has become increasingly influential, and led to the idea that one can understand firms as communities, by introducing concepts such as organizational culture, organizational rituals, and symbolic acts. Leadership studies have also become part of OB. OB researchers have shown increased interest in ethics and its importance in an organization. Some OB researchers have become interested in the aesthetic sphere of organizations. A variety of methods are used in organizational behavior, many of which are found in other social sciences. 
Statistical methods used in OB research commonly include correlation, analysis of variance, meta-analysis, multilevel modeling, multiple regression, structural equation modeling, and time series analysis. Computer simulation is a prominent method in organizational behavior. While there are many uses for computer simulation, most OB researchers have used computer simulation to understand how organizations or firms operate. More recently, however, researchers have also started to apply computer simulation to understand individual behavior at a micro level, focusing on individual and interpersonal cognition and behavior such as the thought processes and behaviors that make up teamwork. Qualitative research consists of a number of methods of inquiry that generally do not involve the quantification of variables. Qualitative methods can range from the content analysis of interviews or written material to written narratives of observations. Some common methods include, ethnography, case studies, historical methods, and interviews. Consultants use principles developed in OB research to assess clients' organizational problems and provide high-quality services. Counterproductive work behavior is employee behavior that harms or intends to harm an organization. Many OB researchers embrace the rational planning model. Decision-making research often focuses on how decisions are ordinarily made how thinkers arrive at a particular judgment, and how to improve this decision-making. There are several types of mistreatment that employees endure in organizations including, abusive supervision, bullying, incivility, and sexual harassment. Abusive supervision is the extent to which a supervisor engages in a pattern of behavior that harms subordinates. Although definitions of workplace bullying vary, it involves a repeated pattern of harmful behaviors directed towards an individual. In order for a behavior to be termed bullying, the individual or individuals doing the harm have to possess more power than the victim. Workplace incivility consists of low-intensity discourteous and rude behavior and is characterized by an ambiguous intent to harm and the violation of social norms governing appropriate workplace behavior. Sexual harassment is behavior that denigrates or mistreats an individual due to his or her gender, often creating an offensive workplace that interferes with job performance. Organizational behavior deals with employee attitudes and feelings, including job satisfaction, organizational commitment, and emotional labor. Job satisfaction reflects the feelings an employee has about his or her job or facets of the job, such as pay or supervision. Organizational commitment represents the extent to which employees feel attached to their organization. Emotional labor concerns the requirement that an employee display certain emotions, such smiling at customers even when the employee does not feel the emotion he or she is required to display. There have been a number of theories that concern leadership. Early theories focused on characteristics of leaders, while later theories focused on leader behavior, and conditions under which leaders can be effective. Among these approaches are contingency theory, the consideration and initiating structure model, Leader Member Exchange or LMX Theory, Path Goal Theory, and Transformational Leadership Theory. Contingency theory indicates that good leadership depends on characteristics of the leader and the situation. The Ohio State Leadership Studies identified dimensions of leadership known as consideration and initiating structure. LMX theory focuses on exchange relationships between individual supervisor-subordinate pairs. Path goal theory is a contingency theory linking appropriate leader style to organizational conditions and subordinate personality. 
Transformational leadership theory concerns the behaviors leaders engage in that inspire high levels of motivation and performance in followers. The idea of charismatic leadership is part of transformational leadership theory. In the late 1960s Henry Mintzberg, a graduate student at MIT, carefully studied the activities of five executives. On the basis of his observations, Mintzberg arrived at three categories that subsume managerial roles, interpersonal roles, decisional roles, and informational roles. Barron and Greenberg wrote that motivation involves the set of processes that arouse, direct, and maintain human behavior toward attaining some goal. There are several different theories of motivation relevant to OB, including equity theory, expectancy theory, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, incentive theory, organizational justice theory, Herzberg S2 factor theory, and theory X and theory Y. National culture is thought to affect the behavior of individuals and organizations. This idea is exemplified by Hofstede's cultural dimensions theory. Hofstad surveyed a large number of cultures and identified six dimensions of national cultures that influence the behavior of individuals and in organizations. These dimensions include power distance, individualism versus collectivism, uncertainty avoidance, masculinity versus femininity, long-term orientation versus short-term orientation, and indulgence versus restraint. Organizational citizenship behavior is behavior that goes beyond assigned tasks and contributes to the well-being of organizations. Organizational culture reflects the values and behaviors that are commonly observed in an organization. Investigators who pursue this line of research assume that organizations can be characterized by cultural dimensions such as beliefs, values, rituals, symbols, and so forth. Researchers have developed models for understanding an organization's culture or developed typologies of organizational culture. Edgar Schein developed a model for understanding organizational culture. He identified three levels of organizational culture, artifacts and behaviors, espoused values, and shared basic assumptions. Specific cultures have been related to organizational performance and effectiveness. Individuals in organizations, work groups, how organizations behave. Economic Theories of Organization Theories Pertaining to Organizational Structures Institutional Theory Systems Theory Organizational Ecology Scientific Management Contributing Disciplines Journals Personality concerns consistent patterns of behavior, cognition, and emotion in individuals. The study of personality in organizations has generally focused on the relation of specific traits to employee performance. There has been a particular focus on the big five personality traits, which refers to five overarching personality traits. There are a number of ways to characterize occupational stress. One way of characterizing it is to term it an imbalance between job demands and resources that help manage the demands. Chester Barnard recognized that individuals behave differently when acting in their work role than when acting in roles outside their work role. Work-family conflict occurs when the demands of family and work roles are incompatible and the demands of at least one role interfere with the discharge of the demands of the other. Organization theory is concerned with explaining the workings of an organization as a whole or of many organizations. The focus of organizational theory is to understand the structure and processes of organizations and how organizations interact with each other and the larger society. 
Max Weber argued that bureaucracy involved the application of rational legal authority to the organization of work, making bureaucracy the most technically efficient form of organization. Weber enumerated a number of principles of bureaucratic organization including, a formal organizational hierarchy, management by rules, organization by functional specialty, selecting people based on their skills and technical qualifications, an up-focused or in-focused mission, and a purposefully impersonal environment. These rules reflect Weberian ideal types, and how they are enacted in organizations varies according to local conditions. Charles Perrault extended Weber's work, arguing that all organizations can be understood in terms of bureaucracy and that organizational failures are more often a result of insufficient application of bureaucratic principles. At least three theories are relevant here, theory of the firm, transaction cost economics, and agency theory. Theories pertaining to organizational structures and dynamics include complexity theory, French and Raven's five bases of power, hybrid organization theory, informal organizational theory, resource dependence theory, and Mintzberg S. Organigraph. The systems framework is also fundamental to organizational theory. Organizations are complex, goal oriented entities. Alexander Bogdanov, an early thinker in the field, developed his tectology, a theory widely considered a precursor of Bertolanffy's general systems theory. One of the aims of general systems theory was to model human organizations. Kurt Lewin, a social psychologist, was influential in developing a systems perspective with regard to organizations. He coined the term systems of ideology, partly based on his frustration with behaviorist psychology, which he believed to be an obstacle to sustainable work in psychology. Nicholas Luhmann, a sociologist, developed a sociological systems theory. Organizational ecology models apply concepts from evolutionary theory to the study of populations of organizations focusing on birth, growth, and change, and death. In this view, organizations are selected based on their fit with their operating environment. Scientific management refers to an approach to management based on principles of engineering. It focuses on incentives and other practices empirically shown to improve productivity.